Hey YouTube, got a tomahawk for you today. This is the CRKT Woods Chogun. Oh, and by the way, welcome to the We All Juggle Knives YouTube channel. Now, if you haven't seen my previous review of the CRKT Woods Kanji, check that out. This is the blood brother of the Chogun. All right, has a back spike. Now, these were designed by RMJ. RMJ is uh, a company that makes basically elite, uh, high-quality tomahawks, all right? And they, they designed this for CRKT, all right? Very nice hawk. Now, this is a, uh, this hawk is very massive. Uh, it's quite heavy for a hawk, which allows you to do things with it that you would normally do with a hatchet or with a small axe, all right? So that adds capability to the hawk. Now I want to thank CRKT all right, for providing this hawk for the demo and review. I also want to thank Ben, who is the uh, representative from CRKT that we all talk to. Awesome dude, so thank you both. Now let's roll in some footage of me doing uh, just different tasks uh, with this Chogun, and then we're going to come back and we'll uh, you know, discuss all the uh, details. Okay, you two, what's up? Hope you like that. Now let's go over the slight modifications I've made to the Chogun. I haven't really done much to it. All I did was add a double wrap of paracord because I knew I was going to be smashing some pieces of cinder block. And you see there's the, uh, the blood and guts of the cinder block pieces there. I knew I was going to be smashing cinder block. And the edges of cinder block are, can be kind of sharp, and when you're smashing them, you know, sometimes pieces fly into the handle at high speed. So this is there just to protect it from the fragmentation of cinder blocks. It also gives you overstrike protection. And as you saw, I can also use it as a nice, uh, a nice grip, right, when I'm making like shavings and those types of cuts that you saw there. So that's the first modification. I also just added some grip. That is Gamma Grip. They sell it on Amazon. Just a little grip and I added more here so it's a little pommel swell all right, for more retention. Yeah, because this is um, slightly smooth. All right, so that's all I did. Now there is no lanyard hole, but you could drill your own lanyard hole if you so choose. Now as far as the stats of this Hawk, it is 19 inches in overall length, 
three and one half inches in blade length by my measure. It's actually pretty much exactly the overall length of this well-known hawk. <laughs> my knee popped there. The overall length of this trench hawk. My well-used trench hawk, as you can see here. Yeah, I mean, these are about, about identical in their overall length, okay? So that's just the size and scale we're talking about here. Now, if you examine the tomahawk heads of the Woods Chogun and the Woods Kanji, you see uh, the shape of the blades are different, okay? These are not just the same hawk with a spike exchanged for a hammer, no. Uh, you see, there's a lot more metal, right, closer to the, uh, the eye of the hawk with the kanji, right? You see that there, there's all this metal going back right to there, right? Whereas you see that, it's a lot more clipped out. It narrows more there, basically. And you see they've done this bottom swedge differently. This is unsharpened, but you could sharpen it. But you see how it goes back to there, whereas on the kanji, there's a wider swedge that's flat there that goes back to there so different blade shapes also check out the profiles from this view this is the kanji and this is the woods chogun you see that there the woods kanji uh, noticeably longer right so you see that just different geometry right in that cross section as well now, what is up with those different, uh, different blades on the Kanji and Chogun? Well, basically, the main difference I found is that the Kanji was slightly better at splitting, which is what you would normally use an axe for, right? You wouldn't normally use a hawk for splitting, but as I said, these are heavier hawks, so you can get away with it with these. But yeah, you saw me split some pieces of wood with this. I did try to split like larger pieces and it was not able to do so. Whereas when I tested that kanji, basically it was able to split a little bit larger pieces than the chogun. All right. And that's just because, uh, as I showed you, the differences in the blade. So, my overall thoughts on the Woods chogun uh, well, first of all, great handle material. That is an ideal wood. Second, this is very heavy duty as I said. It is technically a tomahawk, but it can also perform some of the duties of a carpenter's hatchet. All right, you saw me demolish that pallet uh, and chop some scrap wood. I would normally use my S-Wing carpenter's hatchet for stuff like that, but you saw this did fine. And it could also split uh, some pieces of wood like an axe. As far as the hammer instead of the back spike, I like the hammer surface. I prefer that. Um, obviously, you know, you can use it to hammer tent stakes or hammer whatever you need to, so it's great as a tool. But even if you're talking tomahawk as a weapon, I still prefer the hammer end because, you know, it's going to do just as much damage to a, a zombie skull, let us say. The spike will go through the skull, but I mean that hammer end will just shatter a skull. So to me, it's not any more or less uh, deadly than a spike, but it's less dangerous to me. You know, if I'm fighting with a hawk, if I have a hawk, right? Let's say my enemy uh, hits my weapon with whatever weapon they have. They hit my weapon unexpectedly. I don't have to worry about a spike, you know, hitting into my other hand, my other arm or any part of me, right? So even worst case scenario, you know, you unexpectedly take a hit, have to block whatever, and it, you know, it hits back into you. Well, big deal. It's not going to put a spike into your ribs or to your off hand. Uh, you know, most people these days don't carry a shield with them, right? So you don't have a shield or armor there. So yeah, I prefer this as a tool and even in that uh, zombie weapon application as well. Now, as a throwing hawk, uh, you know, usually a throwing hawk does have a spike so that you can throw it front or back either way. Uh, but you could throw this, and I might do a separate video. I might do a separate throwing video where I try to throw this. But yeah, you could, but you'd more want to, you'd usually want a spike if you're going to have a throwing hawk. 
And the last discussion point is price. You know, everything has to be considered in terms of uh, how much you get for how much you give. The price on this, super reasonable. Definitely a bargain of value, whether camping tool, weapon, just fun thing, or all of the above, or even just a tool around the house, around the yard. Yeah, excellent value. Definitely highly recommend it.